Think back to your childhood. Do you remember playing with your friends without a care in the world, pulling pranks on one another? And when did all of that end for you? Fove, a 16-minute short film by Jeremy Compte, explores a day in the life of two boys, Tyler and Benjamin, who get into a power struggle of innocent pranks, which ends fatally. The film brings us to a world suffused with childlike beauty and curiosity, and then plunges us right into the deep, shocking depths. In this video, we'll break down the film from beginning to end and see how it strips away the innocence of a child right before our eyes, and how the film uses suspense as a hook to keep us glued. The film begins in an abandoned train in the Quebec wilderness. A fly buzzes ominously, and we hear a kid banging on what must be a door. The camera is canted, with a little light seeping in from the outside, and this tells us that something's off. We think that this child is in grave danger until we see another one come into the carriage laughing. It's just Tyler and Benjamin, two bright, happy boys horsing around. They leave the train and play roughly on the abandoned train track in a forest, splashing water, throwing rocks, and even faking an injury from a fall. They are ruthless to each other, but they have a mutual understanding that it's all for fun. Neither one takes it too seriously. And it's interesting to see this film taking place in the middle of a forest rather than a neighborhood where it visually stands out and creates an interesting way to explore these characters without any conflict from, say, parents or other friends. We start to learn more about them when Benjamin supposedly notices a fox and muses about eating it. We find out that Benjamin is a parent pleaser, and Tyler just wants to prove that he's capable of surviving on his own while hiding the issues he has with his father. The two boys come up to a restricted facility, totally oblivious to the danger they are putting themselves into as they head inside. In this shot of them going through a fence, you can see them exiting the relative safety of the forest and entering a place unfamiliar to them, visually showing the bleakness ahead of them as the greenery around starts to diminish. The two boys wander around, looking through windows and throwing rocks at pipes, showing the curiosity that we all used to have as kids. They scurry off when a dump truck passes by, thinking they're in trouble, and unknowingly run towards a quarry with quicksand like mud. The film has visually fully shifted into a bleary grey look. The two kids stick out like they don't belong, especially Benjamin, with his bright orange shirt. Here, Tyler plays around with the mud, but realizes his legs are stuck in it and he can't pull himself out. Benjamin thinks that he's faking it at first and teases him. Seeing Tyler struggling to pull himself out and losing a shoe in the process, we witness how strong this mud can be. So when Tyler, still in the mood of play, pushes Benjamin in, we're aware of the severity of the situation. From here on, the film goes from a handheld look into a locked off feel, signifying that misfortune looms. We want Tyler to get him out, but he's too naive to realize this, and instead, laughs at Benjamin's suffering. Benjamin tries to wiggle out, and we can see his legs sinking into the mud in this shot, and he has no solid ground to pull himself out. 
we can feel the tension of the situation as we know Benjamin's being pulled down rapidly. The stakes are raised when Tyler finally tries to help him out, but can't reach him, even with a stick. We see Benjamin now chest deep in the mud. Tyler gets stuck, and for a moment it seems like they will both sink, but Tyler manages to struggle out. Tyler runs away to get help, but this scares Benjamin as he's left alone. The more he moves, the more he sinks. He shouts for help, but his cries don't carry far in this massive mine, and the film cuts to wider shots to show this. In just four minutes, each twist and turn caused by the two kids elevates the tension and suspense. We're hooked. We want to know what happens next. And at this point, it's clear that the situation is precarious. We follow Tyler as he runs toward a truck to get help. We're wondering what happened with Benjamin, but the film doesn't give us any satisfaction of knowing. We see a kid not knowing what to do as he shouts for help, but there's no one around that can hear him. And when Tyler finally comes back, it's revealed that Benjamin is gone. The mud has swallowed him whole. The film lingers on this close-up shot, and Tyler heaves and shivers in pure terror. It seems that the film has foreshadowed Benjamin's demise right from the start, with the ominous tone while he's trapped in the train, but we've been tricked into letting our guard down. Unbeknownst to us, it was setting us up for what was to come. The film transitions to a sequence of wide shots fading by as Tyler walks alone in the arid wasteland, the very picture of hopelessness, aimlessness, and confusion. Tyler is transmogrified. Where childish joy once radiated, there is now a deep cloak of remorse and grief too heavy for him to bear. He's come face to face with reality, and his innocence stripped away. There is still a sense of impending danger as he slips on the rocks from time to time. A lot has happened, and the film takes this moment to breathe and to let us take in what has just happened, just like Tyler. He slowly returns to the forest, and the greenery starts to reappear. A car passes by, and the driver asks if he needs help. It's correct. Perhaps a bit coincidental, but it doesn't take you out of Tyler's shock. It even adds to his sense of confusion when he doesn't know how to respond and just follows along. Eventually, he tries to speak up and says just enough for us to know that he's trying to tell her what's just happened. The camera subtly zooms in. We're inclined to lean forward to hear what he has to say, but the car stops abruptly. When Tyler sees it, he's reminded of that moment when Benjamin tried to convince him that he'd seen a fox. The fox looks right at him, like it recognizes him, like it knows him. And then, the dam bursts. It finally hits him. His friend sank to his death, and it was his fault. 
Even though Tyler came out of this situation unharmed, we know that he can never go back to that carefree version of himself. In that sea of mud, he lost his mental peace. The innocence of his childhood has been taken from him. Fauve manages to focus on the theme of the loss of one's childhood with a tight plot and characters crucial to telling that story and its themes. Nothing in the film seems unnecessary. It knows when to give us just enough information to capture our attention, and the fox at the end is a wonderful touch. It feels like a witness to the event, like it was almost human. And the lingering shots show us the gravity of what has transpired, and emphasize the significance of the moment. The music as Tyler walks through the wasteland and sits in the stranger's car creates this desperate, jarring, malevolent feeling. The two kids are written pretty differently when you look deeper into what they say and do. Tyler appears to be the sharper, more fearless, more independent of the two. We can tell that he has a somewhat complicated background with his constant need to be right, his shows of strength, and his overall appearance and demeanor seem to point to the fact that he doesn't get a lot of parental attention. But he's never been in any grave situation before, so the writers chose the right time in his life to go through this kind of ordeal. Benjamin is the gentler of the two, and more of a follower. He's more childlike, more in awe of the world, and less jaded than Tyler. It's clear from his behavior and his clothing that of the two, he is better taken care of. This makes his rapid sinking and eventual demise all the more painful to watch. What's amazing is that the actors playing these roles are untrained. Despite this, both of them gave very naturalistic and nuanced performances. The director, Jeremy Compte, auditioned around 50 schoolboys to find someone who could realistically portray not only authentic friendship, but real despair and terror. And it really paid off. The woman who appears at the end may seem a bit forced, but I think if the film ended with Tyler walking and noticing the fox himself, it wouldn't have been as strong. We wouldn't get to really grasp what he's truly feeling, or see the profound effect that Benjamin's death has had on him. All in all, the filmmakers behind Fove have crafted a near-flawless short film that tells a cathartic, poignant story. The filmmakers have managed to take a simple concept and create a unique piece of storytelling. One that's both visually engaging and well executed, filled with high stakes and tension that will keep you watching until the end. Thanks for watching our analysis of the short film, Fove. What are your thoughts? Leave them in the comments below. And if you would like to see more videos like this on the channel in the future, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. I'll see you in the next one.